Ghana has taken some good steps um, as far as um, her preparedness towards cyber attack is concerned. Um, some of the steps include the cybersecurity policies and the legislation instruments that we currently have, um, which are basically meant to address cybersecurity concerns within the country. Kudos to the Cybersecurity Authority, um, Dr. Nkibwe Siako on the helm. He's doing a fantastic job. The other um, part also is the infrastructure. For instance, if you compare um, Ghana, say in contrast to some of the African countries, uh, even in the United States, um, the Ghana government you know, has shown commitment to improving in this area as well. However, for the fact that cyber attacks evolve over time, um, I think that as a country, we still have more to do or there is much more room for improvement as far as our preparedness or cybersecurity is concerned. Um, we need to actually empower a lot more people with technical skills and research capacity um, in order to be able to propose new mechanisms that can enable the detection of um, cyber attacks and also um, deploy or, if you like, implement uh, important security controls within various organizations to ensure that um, as a country we are somehow positioned in a good state against cyber attack. Um, digitization has been one of the biggest um, mantra um, for the, um, the government and that has been pretty um, going well and as we go into digital we have to also um, accept the fact that there might be some lapses we're trying to evolve, we're trying to develop, um, catch up with the advanced um, world and advanced technologies. If you take the health sector, for instance, um, patient data, or if you like, patient health record, is a very sensitive information that must be kept securely. And also, if you come to the education sector, you would find that in the institutions, you have um, data of staff and student, and sometimes even um, some unique research ideas that researchers may, may have found. Now, all this kind of data needs to be secured and protected. And so, the, if you look at the level of risk, it would basically depend on the strength of um, the security controls within these particular organizations. And also, on the other hand, how sophisticated the malicious actors tools are in launching these attacks. As we digitize and try to push everything from manual way from handwritten notes, paper, whatever you call it, um, we should make sure that the data that we are collecting, for instance, if you give your Ghana card to somebody, do people really understand what that actually means? So like if you have a passport, for instance, you could take that book, that document with everything, if you lose it, you really want to do anything in your power to make sure that you get it back. So that information that is in that little book that you hold in the form of a passport, think of it like now you put in that same information in the hands of whoever, wherever it's being stored, whether it's your digital footprints, your social media accounts, your logins, your date of birth, um, your um, other identity, personal information that you might have, that all forms part of the whole data that we talk about that is being collected when you're applying for a job, when you're buying something. Now, the question comes to in the health sector, who actually manages this data? Who is actually um, protecting them? How are they being stored? Are they encrypted or they are just being collected and they left as it is and somebody, anybody can get access to it? The vulnerability of the citizen will vary widely. I mean, that will depend, for instance, on the level of knowledge of the citizen about cybersecurity issues. Number two, it will also depend on the um, behavior of the citizen on the internet. Okay, so if I go to the internet and I expose my data or my sensitive information, of course I make myself extremely vulnerable. So the behavior of the citizen on the internet counts and then also 
the last thing is maybe from a national point of view, how our national institutions are securing or if you like protecting the data of the citizen. Okay, so um, the vulnerability of the citizen, I believe, depend on these three important factors. It could be very devastating because you're talking about health here. So for instance, if you go to the hospital and your data is breached or somebody gets a hold of your data, they can modify your prescription, for instance, and then you can get the wrong medication being provided to you. A clear case, for, um, uh, I know Ghana was doing the drone delivery of blood to rural areas some time ago. I'm not 100% sure whether it's still in play. Drones use the same, they have a memory, they have a processing power, they also have a storage um, unit. That's the same concept when it comes to any um, computer that an attacker will be able to utilize to launch the attacks. So if an attacker use the same concept, the, the is able to manipulate the code on the drone and modify the drone to a point where the drone is diverted to a different location, or maybe the, the, the blood that is even um, transporting is, is fake, for instance. The, the, on the other end, the, the hospital or the facility doesn't know that that has been the case. They administer this fake blood to the patient. Think about the consequence that could occur. So within the education center, like I said, you have data that is sensitive, you know, staff data, you have student data, you have research data. Okay, so research findings are also important data. So you are concerned with how to ensure that these kinds of information is, is rightly secured with the proper network controls. Now, if you also come to this education sector, you know, for instance, in KNUSD, we have a very big network system and students, staff, researchers are all connected over this network. An attacker being successful to intrude or penetrate into this network system may be able to steal valuable data or have access to um, students' data, credentials, and so on, which can be used for many other negative things. The other um, um, application that you can think of, even in the USGA, is being thought of. So um, you have bad guys, you come and cause mayhem where they sort of launch some um, massive attack, people are injured. You try to go to the blood, the blood bank to be able to um, administer blood, but then they are, because these hospital equipment, surgery equipment, everything is going digital right now. Um, they modify the blood bank um, refrigerators and then tweak the temperatures to the point where there's no blood, the blood is bad. So people are injured, they go to the hospital, you won't be able to administer blood to them. Think of another scenario where you're on the surgical bed, surgery is being done on you, and an attacker is able to breach the um, hospital um, um, the equipment, and then in the midst of the surgery, Nothing is working. Everything stops working. That's death right there. So there could be really serious um, consequences as a result. So we need to really tighten some of the screws. We have to ensure strict enforcement of data protection policies or, if you like, legislations. Um, to a very high extent, the citizen must be aware of how their data is protected and how their data is used. And um, this is very, very important. Also, um, we must be very intentional. I mean, I must say that if you want to look at um, the successful approach to our efforts towards uh, cybersecurity progress, I think it must be a multi-stakeholder approach. And we must be very intentional in our adoption for multi-stakeholder approach um, involving all relevant sectors that really matter so that we can really have a very good flow of information and, and um, share information across board because one of the things that would really keep us on top is uh, being able to share information about um, emerging attacks and um, possible attacks and possible ways of mitigating them amongst ourselves as institutions. Apart from just focusing everything on infrastructure, we need to understand that awareness, awareness is always critical. Com as a company, you can spend so much 
building your firewalls, putting the right technological tools in place, um, servers, policies that you can enact. But it only takes one person to allow the bad guy to get in. And because they don't have the awareness or the training that is necessary for them not to click on that. And that is it. I love the way the note on which it ended, because if you follow cybersecurity, you will know that you are as strong as your weakest link. And so if you have a link in the chain that is weak, it weakens the entire unit. And that is what we look out for in cyber uh, security. You're still live with us on Joy 99.7 FM and Joy News. Uh, this is the Joy News Youth Bridge Foundation National Dialogue on Cybersecurity. We're also live on myjoyonline.com. For those of